We've got a doozy of a patch because this is going to be the set 9 update and there are a lot of things we need to look out for. We're going to go over all the cosmetics first, then we're going to go into the system changes which are pretty big. They've changed some stuff that they haven't changed in many, many sets. And then we'll go into some of the UI changes they added to set 9 which I personally love and then we'll get into some of the actual game changes. So first things first, we have the Runeterra Reforged Cosmetics Pass. And this is the pass that they have every single set and it gives you a bunch of maps and if you like them go ahead and get them they also give you some other loot as well and passes in just like in every other game they're like the most efficient way to spend your money in that particular game not that you have to but the option is definitely there and here are some of the cosmetics I think you'll be getting, as well as some booms that you see down here that just aren't pictured. A new thing that is out is this new arena. I don't think this comes in the battle pass. I'm not 100% sure, but this one you might have to buy individually, but it does look pretty, pretty nice. Uh, let's get on into the new chibi. So there's chibi Timo and little devil Timo. I believe these might be the best selling ones that they're gonna have ever because Timo is Timo and <laughs> The question is, which one do you use? Do you use the devil one or the regular one? Personally, for me, I kind of like the regular one more, but I'm probably going to keep using the bunny because, well, I like bunnies more. So now onto the Poro. Poro is going to be like the Baron from Monsters Attack, where they are neither a little legend nor a chibi. And they're just kind of their own thing. They're kind of in like purgatory or something like that. So this is what the Poro looks like. Pretty decent. We'll have to see it in game as well. Uh, and then next we have some raptors and whatever cat sai is. Is cat sai the name of the big raptor? That might be the case. But you can see them here. Some people call them the chickens. And then I'm a boomer, so I call it the wraith camp. Never mind, this one is cat sai. But these are just the new legends that are kind of going into the game right now. Uh, pretty decent, pretty decent. I actually like them more than the ones from last set. I uh, probably like this one a little bit more. Uh, but let's get on into the next cosmetics, which is the rank rewards and more. So if you placed at a certain rank in the last set, you will get some sort of icon or emote as an award. And this is one of them here, and you also get a little legend. So there's the victorious Flutterbug little legend if you manage to get gold or higher. And then you get the triumphant one if you did it in both of the sets. And then here are some of the double up ones, and I believe there's a hyper roll one as well. Uh, so pretty cool stuff if you play that. What's this thing down here? Lastly, we have a birthday surprise Fuo to celebrate us turning Fuo years old. They'll be coming later with our release patch of Rune Terror Reforge. Keep an eye out for them as they'll be available via a rather easy mission. So this is the free one that everyone gets. That's pretty cool. Uh, the one last time I believe was like some sort of river sprite. So definitely an upgrade there to say the least. So uh, one thing to keep in mind is that in the new rank season, a lot of people ask me this. They're like, what does my rank turn into? And there's always like a ladder reset whenever a new set comes out and whenever it's like a new set such as like going from 8.5 to 9 or 7.5 to 8 they do like a really really big reset so people are going to start from either iron or bronze depending on what their previous rank was and then you get five provisional matches that you don't lose any lp for but you obviously want to still do well in them because you gain a lot of LP if you do win some games. But overall, it's going to work the same, if not extremely similarly to every other rank reset in the past whenever there's a fresh new set. This is what's called like a hard reset. After a 0.5 set, they do a soft reset, but every new set, they do a hard reset. But let's finally get on into some of the system changes, which... I've been kind of teasing you about since the beginning. So first I want to go over the region portals. There are around 30 region portals and some may appear more frequently than others. If you already watched the set 9 preview video that I did, you'd already know what these are. But if you haven't, I'll be explaining these more in a beginner guide that I'm going to release tomorrow if you're completely new to TFT. But essentially there are a bunch of portals that you can kind of go into at the start of the game and it decides what like map the game's going to be played on. And it's like a voting thing so you just sit on one of the portals and then it randomly selects one of the little legends to choose that specific portal for the game. Uh, after that we have legends. So legends are a character you can kind of select before you get into the game. And these legends influence your leftmost augment offering. So you guarantee get a specific augment that you want at all stages in the game that you could find out about before you even enter it. So you could kind of plan around it. So they're going to be pretty useful. But of course since you do know what's going to happen the stage 3, 2, and 4, 2 augment offerings will be slightly weaker than other augments of the same tier. That doesn't mean you shouldn't take them. It means that you really must plan around them in order for them to be of great use. They're also changing another augment mechanic where you can reroll every augment once, every single stage, so it makes it a lot less punishing for like using your reroll early. And next up, we have the biggest change, which is the XP changes. So they have not changed XP in like 
I think like four or five sets or something like that. I remember like when set one, two, and three came out, they changed the leveling patterns like all the time. But then after a point, they stopped doing it until now. So level six is now going to cost four more XP. Same with level seven, same with level eight, and same with level nine. So it's going to be a lot more expensive to play the way you did before. But have no fear, I'll be releasing a leveling guide very shortly. So definitely subscribe below if you have not already to stay tuned with that. But my guess is so far is rolling on seven at stage four one is going to be super, super critical now. Before you pretty much did it a lot of times already, but now I'd say it's super mandatory because fast aiding, unless you have like super turbo econ really loaded up, it's generally not going to be worth it because you want to just stabilize your board. Uh, fast nining, probably going to be even harder. So on stage five one at level eight, you're probably rolling a lot more at level eight. Of course, this is again, assuming you're playing exactly how we did before. But if you have a lot of loot, if you're getting all the econ augments, for example, then obviously you could still do a fast eight or fast nine. So it's really going to depend on your play style. And I think that's one of the things that's going to be really cool about TFT in this next set, which we'll get into in just a bit because they're, they do have like a little announcement that they're giving. Uh, next up we have is player damage. So in addition to hitting XP, we're making power leveling strategies a bit more risky by ramping up the player damage during stage four. So again, rolling down at level seven. 4-1, very important because you take more damage now too. So they're increasing the base damage by one, which might not seem like a lot, but remember all those times where you live with like one, three, four, five health? Uh, you'd be dead if you like lost that many rounds in stage four this time. So now into overtime. So overtime, they're, they're just buffing AD carry. So uh, movement speed you now gain in overtime and attack damage you now gain in overtime. I wouldn't really think too much about this quite yet, but it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, next up, we have three star four costs. So I don't know about you all, but whenever you get a three star four cost, you kind of expect to win the game. But in the past couple of sets, they didn't really do that. So they're now buffing them so that they all gain 500 additional health which means that they should help you win a lot more than they did in the past. Again, I don't think they should be auto auto win, but like it's so rare that you should be able to like at least guaranteed second. I remember some previous sets, even last set, people would get like a three star four cost and get like fourth. And I was like, how's that even possible? Because the first three players just had regular generic boards. Uh, but next let's get into the UI changes. UI changes, I think they always do such a good job of this each set. And I'm not just saying this to suck up with them. I actually genuinely believe it. You all know me. I do call things out every single time. So when I do give a compliment, it really does mean a lot. So the inspect panel is really cool because they give so much new information on champions. If you right click on a champion, it'll show up on the right side of your screen. If you play any game, you'll see what I'm talking about, but it shows like what their abilities do, same as before. Uh, they show recommended positioning, whether to put them in the front or back, their range, current items, and they give them item roll tags. So they give you some suggested items if you're a completely new player. But of course, if you're a bit more advanced, generally, if you're watching my YouTube videos, you're generally a bit more advanced or at least intermediate. So you'd probably go on into the website, bunnymuffins.lol slash meta in order to find out what I recommend as items. But it's still really nice just to have a reference, especially since sometimes you just don't know what the champions do because you're completely new to the set. But they also have stats and a quick sell button. I actually have not used the quick sell button, but maybe I will look into it in my next game. Uh, next up, we have the inspect function on carousel. So you can now click an icon above a unit on the carousel to open up and inspect the panel, which is pretty cool too. And then we also have trait inspect. So remember before you right click on a trait or like you hover over a trait and it shows a bunch of champions, but then you weren't really able to do much more than that. And you see some champion icon and you're like, who is that? But you couldn't really find out who it was, but now you can. So you could go over into a trait and then go over into the select champions and be like, oh, I'm going Demacia. Maybe I want this three cost champion next. What is that champion? Oh, it's Katarina. So that's kind of cool. And then after that, they went even further. You could also inspect the recipes for the trait emblems. And then you could be like, hey, I want to go for that item on carousel because that's what the trait builds out of, which is really, really cool. I felt like at the start of the sets, this was one of the barriers for me as well. Next up, we have the simplified tool tips. So uh, tool tips now show symbols to annotate scaling. These symbols are also color coded. And this applies to abilities, traits, and more. And then champion abilities will have the simple description of the ability and align with all the detailed math, which is also nice. Next up, we have large changes. So this one's pretty big, but here's the new announcement. Hopefully the script transition was good because I had to take a dump in the middle of this and I forgot what I said before. But essentially what's gonna happen is they are removing augments from the API. They're also not gonna share legend data in the API. Essentially they say that it discourages player choice uh, and there, it's a pretty big topic, pretty heated in my opinion. And it does help certain audiences. It does hurt certain audiences. Some people say that 
a lot of the reason why a lot of players rose up recently, a lot of newcomers in the competitive scene, that happened because of access to all data, because there are a lot of study groups, there are a lot of private Discord communities that are kind of privy to exclusive TFT information, if you want to call it that. I'm not sure what to call it. Is it like... <laughs> but a lot of people who are not in study groups, they kind of really relied on this data to keep them competitive. And I always say that you probably should join a study group. All the newcomers that come in into the competitive scene, if that's something you're interested in, I look at their match histories. A lot of them, they're not like random geniuses. Well, some of them are, but a lot of them are not. Some of them, I look at their match histories and in previous sets, they're just like diamond. And then like next season, they're masters. And then after season after that, they're grandmasters. And then after that, they're challenger. And then they become like super competitive. One pattern I've noticed, though, is that a lot of these people come in groups. They have a little group of friends that they make themselves. And it's not like that they're masters and they sneak into like a high challenger study group. That's not what happens. What happens is they find other people like them who are also masters and then they study together, they share tips together, and then they blow up into the high competitive players that they are. Uh, this has happened like throughout all the sets of TFT. They're like Zoomer groups that people call them. And in set three, there are Zoomer groups. In set four, there's a new one. Set five, set, like all the sets, there are new Zoomer groups that pop up. And it could be you if you do the study group thing. So even though the data did help like equalize that distance, uh, you could still kind of make one yourself and kind of get better that way. But I feel like it does hurt me a little bit. I use data a lot and some people just don't use any data at all. But I think in the super high competitive space, it doesn't really affect anything at all because most good players don't even use data. And even if they do, they're using data that isn't applicable to them. So it's more of their interpretation of data that makes them good, not the data itself. Nevertheless, there are some augments that are sticking around. You could read that list over here. I did a rundown of every augment, so you can kind of check that out in your own time. But a lot of them are staying. I believe they are changing out like 90% of the augments, I think they said before. Uh, but they do keep a lot from before, too. And a lot of these turned into the legend augments, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then after that, they adjusted some augments. So ancient archives, since you could always get it now, they changed it from four gold to two gold. Built different, I think they're preemptively nerfing this because during the start of the set, built different is always really strong. And that's mainly because people haven't really optimized the way to play the other comps quite yet. At least in my opinion, I say this every set. Uh, and then minor numbers adjustments to a bunch of different augments. And this is just compared to the PBE server. I won't really go through all of them because we really have nothing to compare it to from before because PBE is kind of a little fake. But again, like Ancient Archives nerfed again, same reason as before. I think it's because you can always get the augment if you pick, I believe it's the Earth Legend. So now onto items, Guard Breaker. So a lot of people thought Guard Breaker would be super OP because there's a ton of shielding in this new set but they're preemptively nerfing it to kind of avoid that because obviously if there's more shielding in a set, Guard Breaker is going to become more valuable. That doesn't mean don't build it. It means still build it, but don't like overvalue it like you might have done before. After that, they're also changing Spear of Shojin. So Spear of Shojin, it now makes your attacks restore a five additional mana instead of doing it every third attack. I like this change a ton, even though it gives less mana because it just makes it more intuitive and you don't have to like time stuff a lot. Um, you'll still have to do some like calculations comparing Spear of Shojin and Blue Buff, but it's going to be a lot easier now. Uh, and then after that, Elder Dragon now grants an item anvil instead of a random item. I thought it already did grant an item anvil, but maybe I am just crazy. Speaking of items, they are making some changes to the Radiant items because they're going to be a lot more prevalent moving forward. And then they added new Orn items, so we're going to go over that. So Orn's Blacksmith Gloves, each round equip two random temporary Orn artifacts. Uh, Orn Hole Crusher grants 30 armor, 30 magic resist, and 30% attack speed. And then at the start of combat, if there are no adjacent allies, gain an additional 600 health. So it's kind of like a mini exiles. And then Deathfire Grass grant 50 AP and 30 mana. Deathfire Grass at the start of combat blasts uh, energy at the current target, marking them and dealing 20% of their max health damage as magic damage. And then for the next six seconds, the holder deals 50% increased damage to the marked enemy and 25% increased damage to other enemies. So pretty cool there. Just like uh, ability power and damage amp at the same time. Sniper's Focus grant 15% attack damage, 15 ability power and 40% attack speed. And then attacks and abilities deal 10% increased damage for each hex between the holder and their target. This is extremely good for Deadeye because Deadeye sometimes just randomly hit the backline units. So that's obviously a lot of hexes between them. So it's really, really, really powerful. Trickster's Glass grants 15 armor, magic resist, attack speed, and critical strike chance. And you summon a clone with 70% max health and 20% increased max mana. And you can't equip items to the clone. So 
It's a really good item. I kind of want this. It's kind of like the LeBlanc hero augment from before where you just get a clone, but you also get a bunch of stats too, which is kind of cool. And then, yeah, they make some changes to the other items and they're removing rocket propelled fist. Uh, and then after that, they're bringing back shimmer scale items. So if you played in set seven, like shimmer scale items were like very real and they pretty much help your team get a lot of gold. So you could read over these if you want in your free time. And then Shimmer Scale items also are adjusted for Hyper Roll because of the amount of gold that you get in that game mode. But set 9 should be a banger. I'm not just saying that. I really do think this is one of the cooler sets that they're working on. I actually thought going into set 9 that set 9 would be a throwaway set, that they wouldn't really do much in it because they're preparing for set 10 because 10 is a round number. Also, like set 10 is going to be the first set where there are no half sets. So I thought that was kind of the direction they're going into. But I think the biggest changes are going to be the leveling changes and the thing where they would remove the augment data. Uh, very interesting stuff. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below and let me know what type of videos you would like to see me make in the future. And then finally for the bunny muffins tip of the day, it's going to deal with augments and it's probably going to be data doesn't really mean that much. Uh, you really just need to focus on the basics. It should be something that kind of supplements you. It's kind of like going to the gym. Does taking protein help? Yes. Does taking steroids help? Yes. But at the end of the day, you just have to go to the gym and watch your diet. That's like the most important thing. And then after that, you add on these other things to really boost you up there. That's kind of what I think of data, but that's going to be all for me today. Hope to see you all in the next video.